That is one of the most beautifully composed images in Warcraft history right there. What it represents, the sound, the music, everything coming together. For the Since day one of my World of Warcraft cinematic journey, there's one video that people have suggested probably more than anything, and that's Old Soldier Cinematic. And today we finally get to do it together. If you're enjoying our time together, please consider checking out some of the other videos we've covered on this channel, including our full World of Warcraft cinematic journey, Genshin Impact, Final Fantasy, and all the other games we love. Let us begin. Lore Masters, join me in battle once again. Ooh, strong first image. Beautiful music. Oh no, is that, is that Sylvanas burning them? Really, really good intro. It's just like emotional anchor was set there. Wow. Really well done. This is just atmosphere, atmosphere. That's what I'm getting here. Setting the tone, the mise en scène. Oh, Lord Sarfang. Sarfang. That's him. Deep in reflection, man. What a, what a cool set piece here. It reminds me of Legolas and Aragorn looking out in Return of the King. Beautiful kind of dawn um, over a over a war, you know. It's a song. How feel. many do you think? Too many. Wow! What an image. Oh, that's cool, man. They will come for us now. All of them. He disagrees with her choice, doesn't he? What an image. Cold as ice, even though it's fire burning. I love it. My father, Hikazi. He fought with you in the third war. Oh, I love this quiet, reflective scene. He told scene. me stories. How you could cut down ten enemies with a single blow. He sounds Caribbean. This be my first battle. <laughs> what should I do? I love it. Don't die. Yes. Don't die. Of course. But Cowards die first. If I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious color. <laughs> there will yeah. be no glory today. He's upset, man. He doesn't agree with her decision. It's dishonorable. Wow. Only pain. Only pain. Oh, no. Oh. The necklace. Really oh. nice visual storytelling here. Ah oh, man. You have earned your warrior's death, my son. His son, oh no. Yet once again, I am denied it. He can't get a glorious death and now he's lost his heroic son. I'm using <laughs> Powerful scene. I love the humanity they're bringing to a non-human race. Genius. What are you doing? Claiming what is mine. Yes. Is he gonna challenge Sylvanas? Oh man, I love this already. You guys were not kidding. Incredible scene. This this could be a film right now. I feel like I just turned on the middle of the movie. It's so anchored emotionally. Like I said, that's the first thing I noted. It's just Pinned me right in the feeling of everything that's going on here. Go back. I love how they're giving us time to breathe, too. Beautifully done. I said go back! The lighting. Is... Live another day. Go back to your father. The lighting is very good. I can't! He's dead. The horde! It's all we have. 
Sam. So, you know me. Is that it? What I've seen? What I've done? I love it, man. Oh, give up, boy. Like you? What's gonna happen? He just wants an honorable death, man. It's gotta hurt so much. Losing a son like that. Live another day. Huh. Yes. Beautiful. What a damage. What a shot, man. Just hope. You know? A reason to live. Without armor. Let's go. Let's go. For the horde! Yes. Wow, man. Yeah, that was that was awesome. <laughs> you guys weren't kidding. That was absolutely powerful, man. So well done, man. So well, he was gonna walk into battle without his armor on. Just, just giving up, man. And and it's so sad to see that. And what I love about this is, I don't know anything about this character. You guys were trying to tell me how to pronounce his name before the video, and I, I'm instantly rooted in everything that he's feeling because it's exceptionally done visual storytelling. Um, and I'm not, I don't just mean the visuals and like, oh, the lighting is good, the design is good. Visual storytelling is like, it's, it's the ability to convey the ideas effectively. Uh, to make me feel what's happening. It's not just pretty images, right? So there's there's a give and take there. But I'm just, I'm so impressed, man. It, it's so well done. Um, like I said, if you guys are enjoying our time together, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to hop into our Discord. We have hundreds of World of Warcraft fans uh, just, just living the dream in there, having a great time. We'd love to have you too. Um, and don't forget to join our memberships if you'd like to suggest videos for me to react to in the future. You can find that join button below. But this was unbelievable. We have a lot to talk about. Let's break it down. Um, like I said, just prime level of visual storytelling. Um, right from the beginning. Look at this, man. Look at this image. We have sort of like this... I don't even know what the word... Almost like, it's like a triad of, of emotions set the scene here. Beautiful image, tragic image. And what this is, is, you know, because it's a vignette, it doesn't have to place us in a scene or in a set piece that kind of like makes sense uh, structurally, right? So what, they've, what they're allowed to do because of that is, it's just a vignette, it's just a little bit of a shot, it's a mini scene. Um, they're allowed to create this striking image. And what do I get from this? If you showed this to me completely out of context, what I feel is solitude, loneliness, tragedy. Tragedy is the main word. I mean, look at this. It's just su such an easy focal point for the eyes, but the coloration is, you know, it's cool, which means it's bereft of passion. If we look at the color theory, right? It's bereft of passion, and we're going to get into that later in the trailer as well. I want you guys to think about the color theory in this and how well done it is. So what's happening here is it's bereft of passion. It's drained, man. It's this cold blue, but it's not even a saturated, rich, bright blue. It's pretty much gray. You know, it's like he's really lost his passion. And this is his son, we learn later. Uh, very, very powerful. And as we progress into the snow, so we have this sort of visual triad. What's going on here? The second shot is Sylvanas, which we saw in the animatic just torching uh, the poor night elves. Um, and it's interesting because the horde is 
oftentimes presented as you know very very intense very battle hungry uh you know very sort of warlike but in this sense we're seeing someone who who seems to be against what she's doing like he just doesn't want to be a part of this anymore right it's cold and then look at this the opposite is her passion it's like too much it's overwhelming it's burning people uh you can't even look at it it's almost too bright after that cold image right so it's very very well uh well decided by the director and then this also the sound design here was so on point just boom 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 and then look at the look on his face man it's so cool. And, you know, again, out of context, what does this give me? It gives me this sort of uh, wonderful, you're the best. Literally a mind reader. Mm. <laughs> Aaliyah has brought me boons, guys. She's, she's the best. She brought me delicious tea and popcorn. So we can keep doing this reaction. Um, she's the best. But yeah, what I get here is, guys, even out of context, look at how beautiful this is. This beautifully lit image but look, we have on this side of the frame that passion, that flame, that fire. Um, and then over here we have the blue. But look at how they've decided to light it. Over here, it's just a rim light. So what does that tell you? It's like his passion, that fire, the burning flame is kind of going out. And then on this side of the frame, it's mostly gray. It's mostly blue. It's like he's been drained all the way until it's almost gone, man almost gone just a rim lighting now and then it looks like because of his armor it almost looked like he's imprisoned right it's like a jail for him he is imprisoned by the grief of losing his son and even more so than that he's imprisoned by the idea that he cannot escape this life with an honorable death he's been forced to fight forever man and he can't get his honorable death in battle and he has to live with the fact that his son is gone and like, what does that make him feel as a father, you know? And it's just right there. You know, it's right there in front of us. There's so much emotion in this picture. Blizzard Entertainment. Yeah, and there it is. Like I said, right? Same idea. Same idea. It's almost dawn. You have this beautiful, cool image. It's so well composed. And of course, there's this little flame, you know, just just keeping him alight. The light is behind him. He's looking off into the grief. He's enveloped by the grief. Very, very well done. And this is him, you know, stripping off his armor. Man, it feels it feels so Iliad to me. That's what I really love about this. You guys don't know, I'm super into the Greek canon. I was a classical studies minor in college uh, on top of studying film. I love 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 the greek stories and mythology and the canon it's great it really feels like the iliad to me um this idea of, of armor being such a part of your identity you know we think patroclus we think achilles uh these these you know diomedes phoenix these like legendary warriors uh hector who have their you know it's part of their identity their armor like hector of the shining helm it's like a part of their identity so to see Saurfang just stripping off his arm, it's literally him removing his identity. He's like, so he can end his life. It's like, he's, he's just like, it's like he's taking off his life. It's like he's taking off himself. And um, I feel that this is what I mean with the visual storytelling. There's so much meaning being conveyed by stuff. Um, you know, he's not saying that. It's just visual storytelling. And look at the expression on his face. He seems... He seems deflated. He seems defeated. Yeah. Oh. Lord Sarfang. Yeah. And then I love this scene because what a great contrast. Like, what a great character to be sent to him in his, you know, his time of pain and an absolute lowest point where he's just like, I need a, her a heroic death of some sort. Like, I, I'm so, like, what are we doing? as the horde you know like what are we gonna do i need to find some way to be myself again you know and and, and honor my uh and honor my son or something like that so what i love is they send him this guy and look what he says oh lord lord sarfang so to me i instantly know it's like oh this is a guy who looks up who looks up to him so 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 smart 
to to present this in this way. That's why I said it was very reminiscent of Helm's Deep when the little boy, uh, Aragorn discovers the little boy who's kind of like using this completely rusted, blunt, dull sword. And he's like, oh God, yeah, this kid thinks he's going to die. And he kind of like gives the kid this pep talk and he's like, this is a legendary sword. May, may I handle it? Swings it around a little bit. He's like, you are you are ready for battle, man. You, you're going to fight so well with it. And he just like completely boosts the kid's morale. Um, so what I love in this is the contrast is in that scene, Aragorn is the one who's like, you know, he's a little nervous, but he's still like the most bad, strong warrior in, in the kingdom. You know, he's an absolute beast. He's literally the strongest man alive, essentially, in that in that universe. Uh, Sorfang is almost the opposite now. He feels his absolute lowest. Like he is just done. Uh, so I love that they send him this guy. And you said his, na his name is Zirkin? Troll guy? Yeah. And look what happens. See? I talked about the color theory. He lights the flame. So he brings a little bit more warmth. It's almost like, you know, he saved him a little bit there. How many do you think? Too many. Yeah, and they talk again. This is the image I want to talk about, man. It is a powerful image. It's a powerful image, man. Sylvanas, it's a dark image. And it's just, there's so much in this beautiful, beautiful painting. This, as I always say, is like one of those key frames when they were, you know, pitching this, I'm sure, that was drawn out. And what I love about this is, this could be a beautiful painting in and of itself. Why is that? So if I look at this, it's like, what's so powerful about this image is that we have the subject here. They're looking off and clearly a battle has ended, right? There's arrows on the ground. There's dead bodies on the ground. This subject is clearly a survivor, is clearly the victor of this battle. And they're looking off and it would typically be a victorious scene. But what they're looking at is just a raging flame, like a beautiful piece of nature being burned and the stance is very powerful like it's it's an interesting stance that she has here it's almost kind of like uh you know reveling in her victory but what's so interesting is because of the lack of expression and because of the death that it seems to be on her side it gives a feeling of almost like emptiness it gives a feeling of emptiness and what is also significant is the viewpoint the pov um of this painting is not from Sylvanas's point of view. It's from back behind her. It's from Sorfang's point of view, right? So it's very fascinating. It's very fascinating here. Um, so what does that tell us? It's him observing the emptiness of this victory, the hollow feeling of what have we done? You know, it's super interesting. And it's just beautiful. I mean, it's like we said, the passion, the fire, there is almost no blue in this image. There is a little bit of blue um, and cool tones in the shadows here, but it is just a raging image of flame. Uh, it's beautiful. And look at the contrast as we hop to the next shot here. There is no and that's it. That's what I talked about, right? It's almost like in that shot, we just voiced everything I was talking about, right? She's looking off at her victory. This should be her moment of ultimate victory. She destroyed her enemies, literally burned them to the ground. There's no one left. But what's this? There is no what's that? That little moment. Was it, was it possibly she's questioning what she did? I don't know. I don't know the story yet. But to me, it's like, what is this feeling? Is it dissatisfaction? To me, this is the feeling of a child who has... You know, I want to destroy my friend's block castle that he built. He put a lot of time into this. I want the satisfaction of knocking it down and destroying it. And you get that moment where you do it as a kid. And then you look over and you see your friend is crying. Because he just destroyed his toys and all of his hard work. And you're like, huh, shouldn't, shouldn't I feel better than this? Why do I feel bad? It kind of feels like that, you know? And then uh, there it is. As I said, that painting was from Saurfang's perspective. They will come for us now. Yep. All of them. 
I love it. I love it. And that was his moment of like, what have you done? Do you realize what's going to happen? Do you realize how many people you just destroyed? Like, they're going to come for us? Are you insane? And I love it, man. And it's almost like that was his kind of moment of fighting back. And then he's just, he's just drained after this, man. That It's so sad. But I love it. It's, it's again, it's so Iliadic to me. Um, this feeling of, you know, being on the walls of a castle, um, you know, something like Troy or Ilium uh, from the Iliad, looking out over the enemy, just, just looming over you. It's a feeling of looming doom. Like, you probably aren't going to survive this. Um, and he even asked him how many. He's like, too many. <laughs> we, we are not going to win this one, probably. Um, but it's such this interest. It, it literally is the definition of calm before the storm, right? Imagine looking up at this beautiful sunrise, this beautiful dawn, and you see upon you, like, just absolute destruction. <laughs> but it's a peaceful image. It's a quiet image. Everybody's resting. And like, what a what a feeling that would be, huh? It's like, well, this might be my last calm moment ever. Somebody said in chat, it was, uh, Kasabian, you won, but at what price? Exactly, man. A hollow victory. Yeah, too many has a double meaning because it's also too many died, who thought, right? I love that he said too many. That's actually what I thought he meant. Yeah, too many died in the tree. He's It, it doesn't feel like an honorable warrior. And that's, why I've grown to like the Horde more as I've seen the Warcraft stuff is um, they're warriors, man. They're they're martial people. They're very warlike, but they have a code, man. They have this code of honor um, just like that. It's like this wasn't a fair fight. Those were innocents that we just burned. We won, but yeah. What about our culture, man? What about who we are? It's super interesting. I love it. And again, there's that there's that beautiful coloration we talked about. Like this is this is a solid cinematic. My father, Hikazi. Yeah. Incredible. He fought with you in the third war. And that's it, right? I told you about that earlier, my interpretation. It's like this is a prison for him, man. Literally looks like the cell bars. And he is taking it off. He's finally freeing himself from his perspective. Father, I can finally die. I can finally die he like my son. You in the third um, should I have died back then with him? Like it's just such a poignant image. Yeah. He told me stories. How you could cut down ten enemies with a single blow. And that's it. He puts that down. And I love the reverence with which he puts it down. Like I said. Your armor as a warrior and that style of fighting, like, and again, more in the, in the sort of canon of these grand heroes and everything, like, he's treating it with reverence. Uh, and he's also not just like discarding it with anger. It's fascinating. Uh, where is this location? Yeah. Oh, Hakan says his location is Lord Dayron City. Where Arthas's father ruled for 70 years. Is that really where Arthas's father ruled? Wow. That's amazing. This be my first battle. What a scene, man. What should I do? And I love this because it's kind of like the classic idea that, you know, when you're at your lowest, what's a way to pick yourself up is don't make it about yourself, man. Help somebody else. That's always that's always my what I try to do. If I'm feeling super down. Help somebody else. Don't make everything about yourself. And it kind of snaps you out of it. It's like, okay, everybody's got problems. Right? Everybody's got problems. It's not just me. <laughs> and uh, this is kind of what happens here. He's pretty much done. He's completely finished. Taking off his armor. Take his last stand. And, and it's not going to be pretty. He's just going to fall in battle. And this kid shows up. And he's like, ah, oh, get this kid out of here. But, of course, it inadvertently makes him feel this obligation to, you know, give him a little little pep talk or something. It's it's so interesting. Do die. So let's let's watch on here. Yes, of course. But if I do fall, may it be with honor in glorious color. Obviously thinking about his son. There will be no glory today. Right. Yeah. And there it is. Only pain. 
Look at that horde symbol too. Man, it's it's so it's so beautifully done. And thank you so much, Cody, our newest knight in the order of knights. Thank you so much, man. I'll give you a proper knighting after this reaction, but man. It's it's a beautiful image and we go back to this. What I like is, you know, it we're only two minutes into this. And we've already gone back to the first flash of red psh, that's Sylvanas. We've already got that sort of payoff. Next, we're going to visit the first one. Only pain. And is, of course, the tragedy of his son. What a what a transition, man. And I love the sound design there. The the release. And it's a it's a sad feeling, right? It's a sad feeling. Oh, my goodness. Ravenkel. Ravenkel. Another dragoon. Man, we're going to knight you guys in in just a second. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, thank you guys. Another dragoon. Let's get some helmets in the chat. Yeah, man. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much, man. We'll let you guys in in just a second. And there it is. And what I love about it is it's it's a release for him. And while he while he thinks it might be a a, a, re a relief to let go of his son's necklace, it's a sad feeling and the sound design they chose was so clever there because it's like a you know it's not a freeing feeling it feels sad it feels wrong almost you know and then us looking back as the audience is like no don't let that go man it's your son's necklace hold on to it you know it's beautifully done it's beautifully you done let, you know, let me let me not you guys in before i forget Welcome to the Order of Knights, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you in our midst. Rise and claim your place, and... Raven! Welcome to the Order of Dragoons, our highest order of warriors. Rise and claim your place in the Battle of Azeroth. Make Saurfang proud. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Alright, so back to it. Back to it. His son's name, okay, his name was Drenosh. It means the heart of Draenor. That's a great name. Oh, man. Warrior's death. It's a great name. My son. And yeah, man, it's just. Yet once again, I am denied it. And that's it, man. That's the theme. He's denied his, his honorable death. And it's just, it's so, it's so hard, man. And he cries out, and he, he chose to burn it, which is so sad, man. What are you doing? Claiming what is mine. He wants that death, man. He's been thinking about it for so long. I mean, you said it was the Wrathgate? That's so many years ago, man. <gasps> His son was the Orca Charged Arthas? No way, man. And there it is, another beautiful image. This is an image, man. It's another great painting, and I'm telling you, this was probably in the uh, in the pitch for this video. It probably was. It's just so well done, and to me, like, it says so much, man. It's it's a like one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven, eight siege towers, and a lone soldier is just walking out towards the army with a torch. I want you guys to know that he's walking out with a torch. Okay. He's he's letting it be known that he's there. It's like a challenge versus the idea of him just sneaking up in the dark, which he could have, and probably like, you know, got a little bit of an advantage. He's just marching up with a torch, man. He's almost like just just blast me with arrows, like whatever. It's so beautiful, man. Um, it's tragic. And it's beautiful because look look at his body language. Like I believe he has a weapon in this hand. Yeah, he's got he's got his he's got his axe in this hand. But it's just a it's a haggard posture, you know? And the fact that he's holding the torch up in the air, dude, he's not even lighting the ground in front of him. He's literally like, I'm right here, just get it over with. It's a powerful image. So I love it as a painting. It uh and it's a it's a beautiful composition too. You know, we have different kind of elevations as the distance goes here. 
it's beautifully, beautifully uh, cut off by the torchlight. Just makes this great ground right here. But of course, he's right in the middle of that siege tower, and it just it just makes for a beautiful, beautiful image. Yeah. Like I said, he's holding it up in the air, man. It's it's that attention to detail, and that's him kind of accepting it, you know. And I love, I love, I said this during the first reaction that they give us space to breathe and take in the image. There's a lot of cinematics, particularly game cinematics, because, you know, a lot of it is for a game. That shit's it's real punchy. <laughs> it's it's going to be going really fast. So it's awesome that they are uh, allowing a little bit of time for the audience to feel the tragedy of what's happening here. It's like, Man, this guy doesn't deserve to die. What could bring him back? What could bring him back, you know? And of course, Go it's this guy. Taking his armor off too. Absolute giga chat. Go back. Yeah. Live another day. Go back to your father. I can't. He's dead. So sad, man. The horde. It's all we have. Great acting here for both of them. So you know me. Is that it? What I've seen? What I've done! By the way, that what I've done, what does that remind you of? Anduin, my friends. Anduin, in the, in the War Within, uh, I believe Anduin says a very similar line. What I've done, um, what I was forced to do, essentially is implying, right? And um, it's, it's cool. I love how they have these like kind of cross-character narrative roots through lines that exist you know yeah and then someone just said it in chat how beautiful is this a father without a son a son without a father right isn't it awesome isn't it awesome so it's like what a, what a beautiful uh what a beautiful way to kind of connect these characters and what i like about this is this is one of the strongest ones to me just like War Within, because you have to look at these, or I guess you don't have to, but I like to look at these as short films. I like to look at these as short stories, whatever you want to call it. And it really is the same thing. Um, I love that this is an open and closed story, man. It's a good short film. You know, in the course of this, I see a father who's mourning his son, and then he's going to go and just die. And then he finds a reason to live and to move on and, and deal with this kind of awful reality that he's currently found himself in and, and live another day it's a beautiful little short film so i love it yeah so well done and of course they find a common ground here oh give up boy like you <laughs> he's right he struck a chord there, man. So cool. Yeah, he's an old orc, man. He's seen stuff. He's seen stuff. Live another day. And I love this shot. I want to go back just for a second. I love this, man. This, this was the moment that I was hoping would come because they had built this up again, visual storytelling. Um, they've, they've shown this necklace a lot, three different times. This is his, uh, this is his emotional anchor, man. It's the anchor to his son, his, his self, um, his legacy. And it's like, you know, why did he take the necklace? Um, is it painful to see every day? Yes, but he wears it to live on the legacy of his son. So in this case, it is in a similar way. He wants to live on, you know? Live another day. Beautiful.
Oh, and that's it, man. That's the shot where I was just like, ah, oh, it, it all it all came together. What did I talk about at the beginning with the color theory? All right. Not only do we have oranges and blues, which, as I said, are sort of a um, a really clever pairing of grief and passion, like the will to live and the the lack of it. But also, orange and blue are harmonies on the chromatic circle, right? So what you get from that kind of payoff, that uh, sort of emotional color payoff that you build up is you get a beautiful image out of it. It's very aesthetic. And we have this also representing, now in this image, the kind of will to live here, the color theory that we, we built up is now starting to eclipse the, the grief, the grays, the blues. And it's, a, uh, it's also, look at the posture change. We had a man who's literally dragging himself um, across the battlefield, holding up a torch to pretty much get shot down, brought down by the enemy. And now he's not alone. He has another person with him and he's, you know, holding that person's shoulder, kind of comforting him. And he's able to boost himself up on that, on this child. I say child, he's a younger man. He's not a child on this man's shoulder. Um, so there's just so much meaning in this. Right? There's so much meaning. Like, if you had shown me painting number one, like if I was in an art gallery, painting number one is him walking out with the torch, painting number two is this. It'd be a powerful series of paintings, man. It really would. And it would, it would be so open to many different meanings. But for me, I would probably guess at something like that. Like, maybe there's some peace found here. Maybe he's an enemy soldier that he, that he found common ground with. Maybe they made peace on the battlefield. Maybe they... they parlayed and came to an agreement maybe they came to terms it's just a beautiful image like in a, in a background of of war siege towers enemy soldiers is like this this moment of camaraderie of peace just beautiful really beautifully done yeah and this Did you see that? And there it is, see? The will to live has eclipsed now. Now it's beautiful and bright. Yes. You see, now... So good! And there it is, man. What I love about this line, right here. Look, look at the pain, man. Look at the pain. As he looks down at that necklace, too. It's just great performance. I'm going to have to assume there was maybe performance capture for this, you know, kind of like mapped to an orc's face or something, but very, very well done. And I love, um, I love the voice performance as always. It's been incredible. What I love about this one line is it's, he's almost like pleading with him now. right here. Without armor. I love that, man. It's it's a it's the first feeling of vulnerability that I get in the image, or in the in the scene for this character. It's almost like he can finally, you know, he can finally breathe for a second and say like, you know, he's asking him in a in a plaintive way. You know, it's a beautiful moment, very subtle, very very subtle, but in the acting, in the posture, in the facial expressions. Yeah, awesome. And it's a great, it's a great new character for me. I've never met the guy. The, uh, but I love this kind of like, it's like, it's like he's remembering where he is. He's kind of like, it's remembering who he is. That's right. I'm a warrior. I'm a leader of these people that are now being attacked. Let's oh, do That's right. And he like kind of reassumes his identity. Look at that. Look at that, man. What an image. So well done. So well done. Same hand movement like he did with his son. Whoa. Somebody said same hand movement like he did with his son. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. For the horde, man. For the horde. But it's just, it's just great. Like, 
this whole this whole ending I want to find that image one more time yeah I mean it's it's literally a painting it's it's literally That is one of the most beautifully composed images in Warcraft history right there. What it represents, the sound, the music, everything coming together, the editing, it's its just, it's a feast. It's a feast for the eyes. One of the best cinematics for certain, for certain. So that, that's kind of my, you know, review of this one <laughs> in a few words. But Without armor. The, the color theory kind of coming to life everything coming together into this this final this final image of a man reassuming himself his power his identity awesome and this all happens in six minutes in under six minutes and that alone uh deserves to be celebrated um it's absolutely incredible and guys i think i think we are having our biggest stream ever right now i just want to say this is so exciting so thank you everybody for being here insane uh it's so appreciated i'm gonna i'm gonna hop in chat in a second i've been ignoring you all all you lovely people just totally i've been completely like sucked in by this one it's it's been so good so you gotta you gotta you gotta uh understand <laughs> how i've been so sucked in by old soldier you guys said it was gonna be good and it was yeah next we're doing the battle for azeroth cinematic so i want you guys to kind of get excited for that even though we're still talking about this but yeah um, it's such a great image. I want to go back to this one more time. This beautiful shot. Yeah. Um, before we move on, but yeah, guys, it's definitely one of the best. Um, I'll say my closing thoughts on this, uh, the standouts are our performance, color theory. And I would say that, that, that kind of question and then answer, uh, the, the promise and then the delivering of the promise. You get these crazy vignette shots at the beginning, his son dying. Sylvanas burning the tree, him looking out over the battlefield. And then we get, in six minutes, all of these things are delivered on. And it's just like, it's beautiful. It's beautifully done. It's beautifully done. Yeah. Thank you. And guys, listen, if, if oh, we hit 200 likes, dude, man, you guys are the best. Um, yeah, make sure to sub if you're new. We'd love to have you. We are not anywhere near done on our Warcraft cinematic journey, so... Uh, 